Hey, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Today, what I want to do is sort of explain to people and try help others understand how to actually find your best in stock traits, your trinkets, and sort of keep track of them as the expansion goes on. One of the things that's become quite apparent recently is that a lot of people I've been speaking to in pugs, in um, in some organized group play, and in rare circumstances, some people in my guild don't actually know how to specifically target Azerite traits or trinkets or sort of search for what is their best in slot. A lot of people right now are relying on questions being asked in the class discord channels, looking through forums, and then sort of just using logic and going, this is my specific trait for my spec, therefore it should be better than some of the other ones, whereas in the vast majority of circumstances, it's actually wrong. Blizzard's gearing system for BFA is basically screwing people out of an absolute ton of damage. I would say currently, the way the gameplay and gearing system works is that maybe 70% of your damage is, or even less, maybe 50% of your damage is probably down to your rotation and how you're actively playing in raids. And then that other 50% is just the fact that maybe you haven't picked very specific Azerite traits, which in some circumstances are a comparison of plus 17 damage per second versus plus 3000 damage per second. So we're going to go through here. I'm going to show you how to accurately work these two sites. One of them is HeroDamage.com and one of them is BloodMallet.com. One of the important things to understand is you can't just use one of these sites. Um, the problem is that both of these sites update at different times. So one can be more update than the other. So what you want to be doing is just sort of cross-referencing both to check where traits are on both of them. And then you'll have a good understanding of how to actually go out and farm them. Uh, they're very easy, very simple to navigate. I'll just go through it nice and slow, and then we can look at some of the more extreme uh, versions. I can show you an example for Windwalker Monks, which is absolutely outrageous. And then you'll be able to sort of go in, navigate it for yourself, and sort of increase your character and make sure that you're not being screwed over on an absolute ton of damage. So on Hero Damage, first things first, you're going to come to the main page, and you're going to get the icons for all the classes. We'll go for Havoc Demon Hunter first. So we'll click on Demon Hunter, and we're going to be shown this page. This is Azerite powers by item level, so the higher the item level of the piece of Azerite armor. Item Azerite powers by stack, so this just means if you have one, two, or three of the same trait, um, you'll be able to see sims for two and sims for three. You'll be able to see sims for the races, uh, the combinations. This is talent combinations plus an Azerite trait that you're stacking, and then you'll be able to see sims for trinkets. For the most part, what you want to be doing is just be using the pre-raids here. So, for example, let's do uh, Azerite powers by item level. We're going to go on Havoc. We're going to drop down and we're going to see a big uh, load of simulations here, which is showing us basically DPS increases on different traits. As you can see, Revolving Blades is an extremely large DPS increase, whereas if we go all the way down the bottom, Something like Combined Might, Stronger Together, Collective Will, Stand as One, or even Eyes of Rage here. Eye Beam deals an additional 450 damage, assuming a Soul Fragment. Somebody might think to themselves, this is a really good trait for me to take. In actuality, as you can see here, uh, the difference is kind of astonishing. The important thing in order to navigate this is just by looking at this section at the top. So we're looking at single target right now for Havoc. This is pre-raid gear, and this is Azerite powers by item level and you can change any of these and it will automatically change the sim for you. So first of all, let's just look at single targets. We can go single target of ads, uh, dual target and dungeon. But for single targets, let's look at the best trait currently, Revolving Blades. Now we have a key on the right hand side, 325 item level, 400, 340 item level, 355 item level, 370 item level and 385 item level in the purple just here. What I like about hero damage is that if you hover over on the bars, it will give you a line so you can see exactly where it's intersecting on all the other traits. So, if we have a look at this and we go over right to the end of Revolving Blades here, and we look straight down on this white line, we can see that Revolving Blades at 325 item level, for the most part, is better than a 340 Thunderous Blast, 340 Laser Matrix, it's better than a 340 Dagger in the back. It's better than a 355 Tidal Surge, Filthy Transfusion, Seething Power. And then if we go even further down, it's better than a 370 Ruinous Bolt, Meticulous Scheming, Trade Winds. And then if we do this by stack, so if we have three lots of Revolving Blades, we'll see even, fur even more so that three lots of Revolving Blades at its very minimum is better than everything apart from Thunderous Blast. 
This is basically why you need to be keeping track of your Azerite traits. These will change a lot. I am utterly convinced that what Blizzard is going to be doing is that they are going to be nerfing. Revolving Blades, for example, will probably be nerfed. Something like Thirsting Blades will be buffed. And then suddenly Thirsting Blades will be on this upper end and Revolving uh, Blades will be on this lower end. This is why you need to keep hold of all Azerite gear that you're obtaining. I know in some circumstances you might want to trade it to your friend because the trait seems awful. But honest to God, with the way everything is scaling right now and the way Blizzard is just changing balancing on a whim, I would highly recommend holding on to all of your Azerite pieces. And give you another example here. So let's go for something uh, a bit more outrageous. Let's go for Windwalker Monk. If we go to Azerite Powers by item level and Azerite Powers by stack, we'll do item level first. And we go to Windwalker. For single target, as you can see, if you are not running Swift Roundhouse, you are missing out on an absolute ton of damage. A free 25 Swift Roundhouse is worth 370 of almost every other trait, and then in some circumstances, 385. So, if you're a Windwalker Monk and you're wondering why your damage is so low, even though you've got a high item level and you're gearing properly, likely circumstance is you don't have Swift Roundhouse, and that is absolutely wrecking your character by not doing that. So, I would very quickly go farm heroics, grab yourselves three Azerite pieces of 325 Swift Roundhouses, and just throw them on immediately. You will see a gigantic DPS increase. And if we go to dungeon here, so dungeon generally just means lots of trash, lots of multi-target. We'll suddenly see the sims change and we'll see synaptic spark capacitor. Now, some people in this circumstance will go, okay, I need three of this and I need three of roundhouse so that I can switch in different circumstances. What I would usually do is have a look and see where the single target one is. Um, so if we have a quick look here for swift roundhouse, we might have to go right down to the very bottom. We'll see that Swift Roundhouse is quite literally one of the worst traits for AoE. And the next uh, possible one that we could have been taking is Iron Fists, right? Iron Fists is a specific to Monk one. Let's check where that is on the single target. And oh dear, it's very, very far below. So if you want to be gearing for something where you're like, you know, I want a set of gear that I can just use both pieces of content for, we sort of want to find the highest Azerite trait for both. Uh, Thunderous Blast is going to be the one, as it is for most classes. Thunderous Blast, second on single target, vastly inferior on single target. But if you are running dungeons, you'll be able to see that Thunderous Blast also stacks up very well in dungeons too. Um, so you'll be able to take that and you'll be able to go in and do fairly well in each piece of content. But if you do want to optimize, you know exactly what you should be stacking here as a Windwalker Monk. Also on this website, you can see trinkets. So if we go through trinkets here, and we're on single target. There's going to be lots more colors, but it's the exact same concept. It looks crazy and a bit weird, but we have our key here so we can easily identify. We're going to look for the Dread Gladiator's badge. So we know that a 325 indicated by this color, Dread Gladiator's badge, if we hover over it, is in some circumstances better than the 330 Aspirant Medallion. It's better than the 340 Plunge. So keeping an eye on this will allow you to track your trinkets and basically make sure that you are gearing the right way you should be. And once more, if we go to dungeons, we can see that on this one, luckily, Dread Gladiator's badge is pretty high up, and now Gale Caller's Boom is up here as well. So maybe combining these two for dungeons, and then combining um, Dread Gladiator's, Gladiator's badge and an Aspirant Medallion or a Lustrous Golden Plume for single target will be one of the best ways for you to go into that. If you do want to look at cleave, two target cleave, that is what dual target means. And then single target with ads is something like a Zul fight where there's lots of mini ads going on all the time. Just so we can see the other two, I'll show you races. It's the exact same concept here. So we can see that Dark Iron Dwarf is a large 1.4% increase for the most part, or slightly more in comparison to the normal Dwarf, which is a 0.43% increase on DPS. This is quite significant. So if you are a player looking to completely min-max your character, Maybe looking at switching from a Nightborn at a 0.03% over to a Dark Iron Dwarf might be quite helpful for you. Um, and this is done for basically every single DPS class and every single tank spec. Uh, these websites are not good for looking at healing stuff. A lot of healing simulations have to be done via complicated um, Excel spreadsheets, which you can usually find in the class discords and somebody will happily explain it all to you. They'll give you access to the sheets and show you just how to work them in general. 
All simulations on these websites are purely for damage, even the ones on Blood Manor, which we will go through in a second, and it works pretty much exactly the same. Before we go off this website, let me show you combinations. Combinations here will literally just tell you what talents have been picked, what Azerite trait is being stacked, and then the amount of damage that it's doing based on what you've chosen. So single target with ads. If we are taking this talent combination and stacking Iron Fists, we will be doing the most amount of damage simulation wise that we can be. Obviously in actual gameplay, this will differ. Um, and then just to show, we'll go on single target as well. So we can see like we're switching up for Serenity here and we're grabbing Chi Wave, stacking Swift Roundhouse, and that should give us the best possible DPS gain. If we don't like, for example, playing with Chi Wave and we like playing with Chi Burst, we just need to note that it's only a 0.2% DPS difference in simulations. Um, so it's not actually that punishing to sort of switch around and play with different talents. Blood Mallet, as I said, is another website that you can use and you should be using as like a cross-reference. Works exactly the same, very simple to understand after you've played around with it for 10 minutes, the same as Hero Damage. We'll do the exact same thing, we'll go to Havoc Demon Hunter. It's laid out a little differently, in my opinion this is a little bit cleaner. All I would like on this website is the little, um, if we can go on Hero Damage real fast. All I would like on that website is the little white bar that scrolls down, but with the um, little bars in the background here, it's very easy to tell. And luckily, they do actually just state the DPS um, difference right here. So we can see that Lustrous Golden um, Plumage are on a patchwork fight. So patchwork, for those who don't know, just means pure single target. Hectic Ad Cleave um, generally just means lots of ads throughout the fight, not necessarily a pure cleave. But we can see that Trinkets here on a patchwork fight for the Havoc Demon Hunter shows that a 340 Lustrous Golden Plume is better than pretty much every other Trinket at 355 item level. It's better than a lot of Trinkets at a 370 item level. Um, and we can see that Dark Moon Deck Fathoms here, which is what I have on my Demon Hunter, is better than almost everything and does not start to be overtaken until some of these Trinkets start getting to around the 400 item level range which is why the monetary investment in Fathoms, if you're wondering, is so high. This website works exactly the same as the other one. You can see here that if I just go to Azerite, I can pick by trait stacking and item level. You can search for individual here if you want to find individual pieces, but what I would recommend doing instead is just searching for item level and trait stacking. So once more, as we can see here, actually on this website, Thunderous Blast on single target is pulling pretty far ahead of Revolving Blades. So we do know definitely that Thunderous Blast is the one that we should be searching for on this character for single targets. And then just to show you guys, if we go over to Hectic and Cleave, we can see that Unbound Chaos is now the best one that we could be stacking. In this circumstance, if we were doing AoE, Unbound Chaos is a at three stacks 4,487 potential DPS increase versus a minus 26 DPS increase from having three stacks of Stronger Together, or a 364 DPS increase from having Furious Gaze. This is significant DPS, as I've said, guys. This is huge DPS difference. And if you are using some of these traits and not using your best ones, that may be why, even though you're at a similar item level or slightly above someone who is the same class as you, you have slightly better weapons than them, this is why you are doing much much less damage than them. It's because they have significantly better optimized traits. Once again, we can search by item level. So we can see here that 340, 355, 370, and 385 on AoE for this one is just vastly superior to everything else. Um, and just to show you guys the tier two here, if you're wondering what this means, means the inner ring. So this just means Azerite Godbules, Earthlink, Gut Ripper, things like that. We can see here on AoE, if we change it to Patchwork, Overwhelming Power, is the most significant one here on single target. You can also search for races on this website, so you can see the DPS increase between Blood Elf and Night Elf is fairly similar. You could go for secondary distributions, but instead of doing this, what I would highly recommend is just simming your character. Always sim your character for damage, because these distributions are okay to somewhat follow. Although, if you actually sim your character and get these specific stat weights for your character, slap it into a pawn string, take your DPS upgrades, resim, yada 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 you'll be doing the most damage possible if you have any questions to do with hero damage or blood mana please feel free to leave them down below and i will make sure i answer all of the questions 
I know that this Azerite system is frustrating. It's really annoying. Um, I've been quite annoyed with it recently, but I'm, now that I'm slowly getting over it and I'm slowly stacking lots of Azerite gear, I'm not too worried because I know if there is a change, I'll be able to instantly switch to a new free stack of X trait and I won't have to worry about it too much. But I do know for a lot of players who didn't know that a lot of this was going on, um, it feels like there is a gigantic grind ahead of you. And I don't blame you for feeling frustrated if you do. This is a huge problem on Blizzard's part. They told everybody that item level was going to be the best. And for the most part, that is not the case, uh, especially when it comes to Azerite traits. As said, leave comments down below if you want anything, if you want to ask any questions, you want anything explained. I will try my best to get to them as soon as possible. You can also message me on Twitter. I can usually answer that one faster because I always have my phone on me. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I appreciate it. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you. Yeah.